the recording. Wonderful. Thanks, everybody, for being here. I'm Barbara Zia, and I'm president of the DC League of Women Voters. Um, glad you could join us tonight. You know, most league members want to help register, engage, and mobilize voters. That's the work that the league around the nation is famous for and a reason why so many of us are members of the league. And we do it so well that LWDDC is over, being overwhelmed uh, with requests in the run-up to the November 5th elections to, uh, to sponsor um, voter engagement activities. There are opportunities galore for all of our members and friends to be involved in, and we really need your help. The good news is that Washington, D.C. has the best voter registration rate in the country. Nearly 96% of eligible voters were registered in 2022, and this is due to the dedicated work by community organizations like the League of Women Voters and the D.C. Board of Elections. But unfortunately, many people, many of these registered voters um, don't actually turn out to vote on election day. In the June 2024 DC primary election, only 26% of registered voters cast ballots. And tomorrow evening, we're going to have a meeting to look at why so many low income DC residents don't vote and how we can address the challenge we're gonna be treated to a presentation by Catherine Hapgood. She's a reporter for the Center for Public Integrity, and she's examined low turnout in DC communities like Ward 8. So we, we hope you're gonna be able to join us. That's going to be in the league office. That's a live meeting. Um, and Jess said she's gonna to try to record it as well. Um, in the run up to the uh, November 5th election, we're going to continue to help voters register and update their, res their registrations. But a major focus to address that low turnout is informing, engaging, and mobilizing voters, especially low income and young voters, the demographics in DC that tend to vote in low numbers. Tonight's meeting is a chance to learn about some of the many volunteer opportunities from our amazing Voter Services Leadership Team. And I'll just go around the room and introduce them. Um, Anne Castigliano Cataldo handles New Citizens. Greetings, hi. Uh, Myra Woods is doing incarcerated voters. I don't think she's with us tonight. Uh, public school students, Deborah Hallen. Hi, hi everybody. With Ann Bromell. Yes, Ann Bromell is doing private school students. Hi, everybody. High, uh, post high school youth is being led by Nancy Hirschhorn. And Vote 411 is being managed by Catherine Ray. Hi, everybody. And then we have a myriad of other community events and I'm kind of riding herd over those. We're going to need volunteers for the, this full calendar of events that we've got planned. And as events are finalized, you, we, we post them on the event calendar on our website. And that's lwvdc at lwvdc.org. Or you can send an email uh, from the contact page on our website, or you can email me, I'm president at lwvdc.org, or you can email a member of our voter services team, and I would ask them to put their addresses um, in the chat box. So now let's, uh, uh, Jess, do you have that um, document I sent you for a screen share? I sure do. Do you want me to share it now? Yeah, if you would, please. All right, these are some important dates. Um, one of the most important for us in, in our discussion tonight is um, October the 15th. 
That's the deadline to submit voter registration forms to the DC Board of Elections. This includes the paper forms that we collect at registration events, as well as online voter registrations. After October 15th, the Board of Elections tells us that people can register to vote at early voting centers, uh, which are going to be open um, from October 28th through November the 3rd, or they can register to vote on election day. So these are important dates for us. And I've listed on the right side some upcoming events, um, and I'm going to ask uh, people on our voter services leadership team to, you know, to talk about um, activities in their areas. Um, you know, I will just say that again, that as these events get finalized, we post them in the uh, event calendar on our website. And different events take require different numbers of volunteers, um, and those postings show how many volunteers we need. Some of these events, for example, the Woolly Mammoth Theater, bless their hearts, they want us there for all their performances for their first show, first show of the season. I don't think that's doable, so I just said, you know, we would try to do the weekend, evening, and matinee performances. Um, some of these events, you know, for example, the high school presentations uh, that we're doing with the AU Law, um, Marshall Brennan Teaching Fellows Project. Um, you know, some, some of you, um, Anita, you were doing that with us last year. Um, those dates have not been set yet. So, you know, be patient with us. Um, we are posting these as soon as we get confirmation from the organizations that, that have asked for our help. So let's get started with our team. Um, Anne Cataldo, would you please go first? Sure. Hi, everybody. My name is Anne Cataldo, and my area is new citizens and immigrants. So the one thing, the, the, the big place that I always need help is for the naturalization ceremonies. The ceremonies take place routinely. It's the second Tuesday of every month. They take place in the courthouse building downtown DC, which is at C Street. It's very accessible from the courthouse metro line. So the commitment is from about 8.40 in the morning until about 11.30. We go into the district courthouse building. We're basically guests of the court. We set up a table right outside the courtroom where the naturalizations occur. There's usually somewhere between 100 and 120 people being naturalized. In the course of that ceremony and at the end of it, we help them fill out their voter registration forms, make sure they're correct, and work in tandem with the Board of Elections so we can hand them right over to the board and get these people registered. The, the kind of people I'm looking for are people who can work in dynamic and fluid situations because when you're inside of a courthouse, all kinds of different things can come up. Kind of people who are hand holders because red, because first of all, you're working in a very emotional experience. People are being naturalized. A lot of them, English is difficult for them, and so kind of help them through the process. So if you would like to sign up for any one of these, they will continue to go on every month, the first Tuesday. I calendar them all about a week before. I'll send out very explicit information, and I'll bring to the courthouse everything you need to do your job. So that's my big job. Now, what Barbara was talking about, which is this crunch in September and October, I have two. September 17th, the ANC from Tacoma and Coolidge High School have joined forces to have a community registration because that is voter registration day. So there'll be all kinds of events. They're in the making right now. They've invited the League of Women Voters to come in, to give out information, to help with registrations, 
maybe to give out, get people to sign the statehood petition. So this is an activity, I believe it's the first time they're doing it. They want us to be in on the ground floor. I need one or two um, volunteers for that. And then finally, on September 21st might be the most challenging of all of the activities I'm leading. This is an activity with Lifeline Partners, which is a Lutheran church group that works with people who have disabilities. Most of these are some type of cognitive disabilities. They're, this event will be from 1230 to 230. The organizers believe there'll be about 60 people. They're looking for a presentation and a lot of one-on-one -on -one work with people who are very bright, but have, have simply all of those disabilities that go along with communication or making themselves understood. So uh, at that event, there's even parking. So I'm looking for one or two people to help with that. I put my email in the chat. And so if you have any questions or if you're interested in any of these three events, please reach out to me. I'm, I'm sure you're going to love any one of them. Thank you. Thanks, Ann. Any questions or comments for Ann? All right, well done, Ann. Um, <clears throat> incarcerated voters, Myra's not with us tonight, I don't believe, right, Jess? Not with uh, us. Yeah, um, Myra is unfortunately moving away from DC. She has headed up our incarcerated voters team brilliantly for the past year. Um, you know, as you know, D.C. residents in uh, the D.C. jail or in the Federal Bureau of Prisons maintain their right to vote. And so the D.C. League works hard to make sure that um, that these voters um, are registered to vote um, and and have information about what's on the ballot. Um, we try to get them the vote 411 voter guide before every election. And we work closely with the uh, Department of Corrections and the Board of DC Board of Elections in that endeavor. So I would say if anybody has got an interest in um, doing this kind of work, it is truly dedicated. Um, you know, to go into a jail, you have got to be um, properly vetted and badged. Um, so it's, you know, you, you, it's not a drop by situation by any means. But if anybody is interested, please let me know. And I put my email address in the chat and um, uh, we, can, we can talk with Myra about it. So private schools, uh, public school students, Deborah Hanlon. Hi, everybody. Um, as mentioned, um, registering and engaging young voters is one of the National League and the DC League's priorities. And this is because there are over 41 million Gen Zers. And if you remember, Gen Zers are those people who are born after 1997. So they're about 20, the oldest is about 22 years of age. And I'm kind of focusing on the high school uh, students who can pre-register and register um, as young as 16 years of age. And I did want to mention young Folks, young voters have very specific interests and they're a little bit uh, difficult for the League of Women Voters sometimes to communicate with. But just to give you some information there, their priorities are things like climate change, reproductive rights, DC statehood, student loan relief, and gun violence in schools. So those are some of the things that we can engage them with. Um, we have a couple of specific projects where we're trying to engage high school students and mostly getting them registered, but really trying to energize them to get out and vote. Because we know that at the midterms, as Barbara mentioned, only 26% of folks even went out to vote. So um, the first project I want to just mention is the High School Challenge, which is an initiative of the DC Board of Education. And they're creating a citywide voter registration competition challenge 
in maybe five or six of the high schools. And we're partnering with the Board of Education, the Board of Election, the New Voters Initiative out of the University of Maryland, and also the National Women's uh, Foundation. So these are projects that we do not do alone, but with partners. Um, so that's going to be starting hopefully uh, within this school year in the next couple of weeks. Um, another initiative I think Barb touched on was the American University Marshall Brennan Constitutional Literacy Project. And this uh, project sends upper level law students at American University into high schools. And they teach a civics course over a semester, I believe. And these law students and fellows, they're called, um, they've invited the legal women voters to come into the high schools with them and teach a very short session in one of their uh, classrooms. So we do need people who are interested in maybe going to a classroom and giving just a short presentation about voting, voting registration, voting history. Um, these, they're very interested in DC statehood and maybe some of the other initiatives that um, pique their interest. So that's gonna be going on and starting in September and we'd love to have some volunteers who'd like to go into high schools. Um, another project or the last project I just wanted to mention is our work with the Girl Scouts. At the national convention this year in June, the Girl Scouts of America and the National League of Women Voters partnered are joining and to create a partnership. And we are actually partnering with the DC Girl Scout troops. And our next or their event, they're having a um, civics patch that they're going to be awarding students, the Girl Scouts. And they're going to do this by having an event, hosting an event, having them do some exercises to earn a patch, which is just sort of a less, lesser badge. If you were a Girl Scout, you know what you had to go through to get a badge. Um, so we're gonna participate in one of their events on September the 6th here on Capitol Hill and help the Girl Scout troop leaders award these girls with a Girl Scout patch on civics and um, voting history, women's uh, history of women vote, right to vote and the electoral college. And the Girl Scouts are providing all the materials and we're just there to help them and support them in um, engaging Girl Scouts in voting and civics. Any questions? Thanks, Deborah. Um, Andrew Mel, you want to talk about what you're doing with independent schools? Yes, thank you. And I noticed um, someone who has already signed up and someone else who's interested, and that's great, uh, on our call tonight. So thanks to our intern, Dia Bardwell, I have a list of all the schools in um, the high, public and private high schools that I've printed out. I have five sheets long. And I am writing to the private schools to offer um, trained um, volunteers from the league to either come and register students in their school or to train their students to register voters. And I'm starting from scratch and I have looked at the different websites of the schools and I've sent emails or called people. It's interesting, some schools don't offer emails for their staff members. So I've called people and it's a beginning. I heard back immediately from one person who said that she'd like me to come and train her civics class. So that's great. And we're just talking about when and how she um, envisions doing it. Hopefully I'll get a lot more, but I, I think it's very much a process of um, where you begin and then you ask them who you should talk to and then you try them and and we'll just see how it goes. I do have, I sent out emails um, to a lot of people who had uh, indicated an interest in registering voters when they first joined the league. However, I typed them um, and um, 
And that's how, for instance, Shelton responded. But I got a lot back that, and I'm not sure whether they were typos or um, they are people whose emails have changed. So I need to go back and look at that. But I have about 10 people who are interested and um, welcome others. And um, it's just very much a building process and we'll see how it goes. But I'm really excited to be doing that and hope that we're able to be in a lot of schools. Thanks, Anne. Any questions or comments for Anne? Oh, I do have one other thing. If anybody has contacts with any schools, if they teach in private schools, or they have friends or family members who do, it, that would be, please email me. It would be really helpful. And my email is in the chat comments. Thank you. Thanks, Ian. We'll save time at the end for general questions that people may have too. Um, next, um, Catherine Ray, who um, rides herd over our Vote 411 voter guide. How's it coming? It's it's coming. Um, it just when I unmuted myself, I lost my little document. Okay. Um, Hmm. Well, I'll have to wing it. Do you want us to come back to you? Um, well, no, because I'm afraid when I unmute it, it's it it's just I I'm not I'm not juggling my screens well. So I just very quickly, um, I do the voter guide. And the League of Women Voters of DC uses software that's provided by the uh, U.S. League Education Fund to create an interactive online voter guide. And uh, what we do is we upload the candidates into the guide, and then the system sends an email invitation to each one of these candidates, inviting them to participate, invites them to uh, upload their their profile, their in biographical information, their the kick can upload a photo, a YouTube video, if they have a campaign video that they want to. We also send them between two and six questions that our league members have posed. And we pose those questions in both English and Spanish. And we, it's the first time this year, we're very excited about that. And we invite them to respond in both English and Spanish. So we, The, the it's a great powerful tool but it's only works if we get good exposure to our tool and so what I need I need like every single league member every one of us to post on whatever list serves that they have whether it's the PTA or uh, when you go into schools if you mention it to talk about our voter guide and especially in the run-up to the guide, we need people to help nudge candidates. So that's what I would love to have people volunteer do to do. With the new release of the software, they took away a wonderful feature that used to tell me whether the candidate had actually opened the email or not. Well, they took away that feature, so I can't tell if they did. So sometimes we have to just blindly call and ask if they've if they've seen the email and um, they usually say they haven't if they haven't participated yet so I need people to nudge candidates and I need people to talk up our voter guide and I need people to post on their neighborhood lists because I do think that's absolutely the best way to reach people is reaching out to the people we already know and so that's kind of the vote 411 and where I need help the second thing I wanted to talk about really briefly was um, the absentee ballot week at American University that we have helped with for many years now. The students are registered to vote already, but they're not going to be home on November 5th. They're going to be here in DC. So we help them apply for their absentee ballots. There's a lot of voter suppression that goes along with the absentee ballot process. 
Some of them require that they be notarized. Some of them require that they photograph, you know, send a, send a um, photocopy of their driver's license. It, they have like forms that are very complicated. They have little check boxes over here and check boxes over here and check boxes down there. It's kind of a gotcha situation in a lot of ways. So what the league has helped them do is once the students fill out their absentee ballot request form, we just review it and make sure they've dotted every I and crossed every T and checked every checkbox. But it's a lot of fun because the students are very excited about voting and engagement. Any questions? Well, I'd actually like to, uh, to know about that absentee ballot uh, uh, activity and when when you're going to post that for volunteers. And since I'm doing things on campuses anyway, um, that wasn't on my list of of events coming up. It's it's on it's on the calendar now. At okay. least the calendar that I have access to. I don't know if it's on the public calendar it's not um we're um <clears throat> catherine we're waiting um to get um some more information from um the library but it is the week of september the 16th huh. through september the 20th and um there you can sign up for slots several of us have done this it really is a great experience um the library makes it very easy for us um they've got computer um, terminal set up for the students to use. They've got information about what the requirements are in every state um, to vote absentee. And you know, it's, it's a reminder that, um, that there, are, there are a lot of hurdles that people have to jump over in order to vote in this country, particularly young people. Um, so it's, it's a great educational experience. So from uh, the week of uh, September the 16th, from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., I can't remember what kind of slots we had, maybe working a couple of hours, um, but AU staff also volunteers. So, you know, so we don't have to cover all of the, um, all of the shifts. Thank you. And okay. uh, Catherine, go ahead. So um, I, just let me know what you still need to know from AU. And I'll find out. It's it's welcome week. The kids are coming are back on campus now, so it's kind of crazy. But I can find out what you need to know. Okay, that is great. And um, you know, we know from research that a lot of people don't vote because they don't say they say they don't know enough about the candidates to make informed decisions, particularly um, you know in um, races that are um, at the lower end of the ballot, you know, who's running for the ANC, for the Board of Education. People may know a whole lot about who's on the ballot running for president, but mm -hmm. um, so many people leave those important races blank. So vote 411 is a critical tool to get that information to people. And I think this year, Catherine, we're doing a lot more of, of outreach in the community about vote 411 and what it offers. So I know you're doing some presentations um, and Stauffer's doing some to Anacostia Coordinating Council, um, AARP. Um, so that that is critical. And I, I do, I do want to say too, I, I believe the league is the only voter guide that includes the ANCs, or at least invites every ANC to participate. So if you know your ANC commissioners, please encourage them because a lot of times people don't want to open links that are in emails and I get it. I, I fully understand, but that's the only way we can do it is through the email links. Thanks, Catherine. Uh, Nancy Hershorn, what's happening with post high school youth? Hi. Uh, well, uh, we have, I've just started, I've been doing this for about a year, maybe a little less than a year. And what we have done is responded to student requests to go on campuses and set up tables and uh, register students uh, to vote for the first time or check their registration to see if it's up to date and help them 
register properly or change their registration if they've had a change of address or something like that. And in the spring semester, uh, I went to my first event on uh, GW campus, uh, which was set up by the students and they had a good network of people. Uh, and then we also, I, I organized my first team event at uh, Howard University campus. And we had a, a great group, some of whom are in this meeting, um, go in response to a request from one of the students who had a challenge where she, she wanted to register 200 people to vote in one day. Uh, and we had a group go there. We didn't come close to 200 people, but the students uh, attracted attention to our table. They had pizza. We had a group of, uh, uh, I can't remember now, six or eight volunteers with ready to register voters on uh, tablets and to fill out paper registration forms. And uh, we got a lot of enthusiasm uh, about that from both the students and the volunteers. And now we're starting a new semester and trying to figure out how to continue this effort and students change and, and faculty change. And we're trying, one thing that I've found challenging that I'm trying to work on is building a network of contacts at, at each of the schools. I also building a group, a list of a group of volunteers and uh, making some progress in, in that respect. Um, and, we did receive uh, a partial a request from AU Law School for us to participate in a civic engagement uh, event on September 12th. And I got three people to volunteer to help with that program. But we're, we're still waiting uh, for the AU Law contact to provide us with details. But once, once they do, we'll put it on the calendar. We might not need additional volunteers for that, but I'm hoping that we will be able to have volunteers go to a number of campuses during the year uh, to engage with students, get people registered, encourage them to get out to vote. And part of what I've been doing is trying to, um, so building contacts at the schools, building a network of, of volunteers, learning about tools out there by various nonprofit organizations and trying to take advantage of tools that these organizations have. There's a students uh, learn, students vote network that has many tools and trying to figure out how to bring our team together and use those tools and, and conduct events that have a relationship to some civic holidays that have been identified such as early voting day and voter education week and uh, and uh, I, those are, are the main ones and to try to also get uh, learn how the campuses themselves are trying to improve their processes so that they qualify for being um, uh, voter friendly campuses and and trying to find the people and direct them and see what they have in terms of plans to to have that designation um so the so we have one event on the calendar we ha i have various emails going out to other uh campuses so we're trying to get uh in touch with UDC and connect with a a student ambassador program they have. I don't think they've identified their ambassador yet for the year. Uh, we'd like to go back to Howard and we have been emailing them. They would, I'm sure they'd like to have us back, but they haven't, they're busy just, I guess, arriving and getting themselves settled. Um, and we have volunteers interested in going to Catholic University and, and I'm sure it would be good to go, for us to go back to to GW as well. So for now, uh, one uh, one thing I'd like is if some of the people uh, who are really interested in working on the college campus contact me and let me know uh, their availability to help and see if in addition to the formal events that we have on the campuses, if they can help 
update a list of contacts and reach out to people they know at these schools and to let them know that uh, we'd like to continue to be involved on their campuses. Uh, we also, ha I have an idea that we want to be involved in post high school education that's not necessarily a four years college. So there, there are vocational training programs. We're trying to identify people in those programs as well, uh, I did talk with someone at the Carlos Rosario School, which works with a lot of new citizens and they've done a lot of voter education events on their own, uh, but they said they'd keep us in mind and see if we could come in to one of their uh, events. So I'm, as a, I'm in a similar situation to Anne Brumel with the private schools, part of the challenge is, is finding the contacts, building a network, uh, then I, I think we're fairly well equipped to go on the campuses and do tabling and register voters. Uh, the key is how do we connect with the students, encourage them throughout the school year, find out what their plans are, um, and offer to partner with them. So, uh, so I don't know if anyone has questions. And I'm also been doing a lot of traveling, so I'm hoping to find people who are willing and able to jump in and do something on a campus if I am out of town, which I will be in September. So we have one event, which hopefully is going to come off in September, uh, on September 12th with um, AU Law School, but uh, we're still working on plans for the rest of the academic year. Thanks, Nancy. Any questions or anybody want to um, work with Nancy on outreach to um, schools, post high school youth. I think your email address is in the chat, right? Yeah, I put it in there. And one thing that just occurred to me after listening to Catherine is that uh, perhaps as after your uh, work um, with the absentee ballot at AU, we could have some kind of a model to offer that to other schools in the area too, which would have a need to help with absentee ballots. We have that all done. As yeah. a matter of fact, I can send you the link to the subject guide. Um, Gwendolyn has included all of her letters, everything. Um, and there's also, she's also gone through and checked every single state and found the requirements for the absentee ballot. And we have in the past actually uh, partnered. We did an absentee ballot day at Howard too. Okay. I don't know. Alex Wilson is still there. If she is, um, I, I can, I can. Was I can, she a, a faculty person? She's what well, I think she's a librarian or, ah. well, she, we had it at the library. So I don't know if she's a librarian or whether, I don't know. I well, maybe oh, that's man. another approach I could take when I, when I get back from my travels or someone else could do is to reach out to all of the libraries at these schools and see if they would, if they might be active in this, and that's not an um, a set of contacts that I've dealt with in the past. But uh, that that's good to know about for sure. That's wonderful, and you know we, we should keep in mind that we're all volunteers. Many of us have day jobs. Um, we travel. We you know have families. We have day jobs. And um, we are, we're blessed with two extraordinary interns who do a fabulous job for us. But other than our, our interns, we are all volunteers. So, uh, you know, it's, it's always amuses us when we talk to some organization that's heavily staffed. They say, well, you know, let your staff do it. And we say, well, you know, we, we, you know, we don't have staff. We're all volunteers. Um, but we get a tremendous amount of work done. People cannot believe um, when, when they realize that we're an all-volunteer organization, what it, the work that we're able to accomplish. There are some other events going on we haven't talked about. Um, Ann Stauffer, are you there? Do you want to talk about um, State Fair? Uh, sure, I'm here. Um, the State Fair is um, September 7th. It's the 15th annual DC State Fair. And we, um, for the second year running, our, um, have a low-level sponsorship. We're sponsoring the DC-themed art contest. And so we'll have a table 
um, talking about um, voter information and DC statehood. And, you know, um, I just want to point out last year we were there for the entire day and we registered four voters. So it's less of a voter registration event because DC fair attendees tend to be already registered. And it's more about making sure they realize that there's vote 411, that they can get A and C information, you know, that they, and of course, talking to them about statehood and how it's not a pipe dream, but that we're actually pretty close. So um, that's what the state fair is. And even if you don't volunteer, I, I recommend coming down and checking it out. <laughs> so. Thank you, Anne. That's at Franklin Park. It's gonna be a wonderful day and that event is already posted. Um, so I think there are still um, slots open for volunteers, right, Anne? Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yes, there are. Yeah, and it's you know it's good to to realize the connection we make between um, voter engagement and education and advocacy for DC statehood. Um, you know we're, we we uh, we'll be doing this at, um, at at the at the five um, high schools that are part of the AU Marshall Brennan Teaching Fellow Project. Um, we're going to be going to the uh, WNBA Mystics games. Two of those games. Um, registering voters, giving out voter information, and talking up statehood. And those events are also posted. Um, the Mystics Games are on September the 15th and September the 17th. And as was mentioned, September 17th is really an important day that is National Voter Registration Day. And besides um, the Mystics game, and um, what else we got? Oh, the ANC, um, na the um, Advisory Neighborhood Commission 4B and Cooley High School tabling, um, that'll be on the 17th. We're also going to be at the National Museum of African American History and Culture on National Voter Registration Day. Um, and that will be a full day event. Some of us did it last year and it really is a wonderful event. Um, we see people from across the nation and talk with them about 411 and um, and help them register or update their, their voter registrations. So we've not posted that event yet on the website, but we will be doing that soon. Um, we've got a number of other events coming up. Um, Lifeline Partnership, um, they work, they serve uh, residents who have disabilities. We're going to be speaking to them on September the 21st, and uh, we'll be posting that event. Uh, a Black and Women's History Ministry um, on September the 29th. So all of these events are going to be posted eventually. And I would suggest that uh, you contact us Contact us individually, or you can email the league's um, website, and one of us will answer, um, or you can reach out to um, an individual on the team uh, personally. And also, if anybody is interested in kind of upping your role, uh, if you want to be a more active part of the voter services team, let me know. We would absolutely love to have you, because it takes a village, truly. So, got you know what? What are your what's your what are your thoughts? Ideas, suggestions, questions. I, I do have a question. Um, this is Jess. Uh, I'm uh, Catherine. Can you let us know what happens if a voter tries to go to vote for one now versus when would they be able to go to vote for one and maybe actually see the DC information? Because I think. One of the challenges, right, is when we're out in September, our the guide isn't always live yet. So someone goes and it doesn't, there's nothing to see yet because we haven't finished collecting all of the data. So when do you think it'll be live? Be it to it's, give your best estimate. It, uh, well, it that's part of that was written down that I, I did find my little sheet. Um, it's It's five to six weeks before the election. We can't make it live earlier because the candidates haven't filled out their information. We just got the list of candidates from the Board of Elections. They give it to us in 
we have to ask nicely several times um, to give it to us in Excel spreadsheet. And then our chief technology officer, who happens to be my daughter, reformats the spreadsheet so that it can upload into a format that vote 411 can accept it for the candidates. And I was going to take a look at the spreadsheet and tell you how many candidates we had, but there are hundreds of them, hundreds of candidates. Um, so we need everybody to, to, I mean, when you're at anywhere where you think they're, where they're candidates, you need to tell them about the league guide, tell them that they'll get an email invitation. And then my email is really pretty easy to remember because it's vote411 at LWVDC. And I'll, I'll get, I, most of us on this call are old enough to remember what 411 is when you call it information. That's what the vote411 is. It's a, a nod to the old telephone information. Um, so yeah, five to six weeks. To answer your question specifically, when they go to the voter guide and put their address in, they get a, a message that says there are no, there, there are no, there's no voter guide for you right now, but check back closer to an election, the election time. Um, and it, I, I'm anticipating five to six weeks. I have to get it out because I'm leaving the country. So I got to get it done before then. But, Just want to make sure people are ready to kind of say it'll be live in early October, right? Like as opposed to. Yeah, so now there is, there is a secret and that is that I left one. I left one race live because what we do is after the primary, then I unpublish the, the list and archive all the candidates who didn't win and the people who one will stay on the ballot and they can change their answers if they want to, but they don't have to because we ask the same questions in the primary as in the general. So the Ward 2 council race is still live so that I can see what the public sees. And so if you put in the Martin Luther King Library address, which is 901 G Street Northwest, or any address in Ward 2, it'll pull up should pull up Brooke Pinto. Um, I thought she was safe to leave up because she ran unopposed. Um, whether it worked just unpublish everything except one is not 100% clear, but if you wanted to take a peek. That's great advice. So if you're showing someone vote for on one, know to use 901 G Street Northwest and there might and be something there to look at. Something there to look at. Um, I'm, I'm actually on the case of vote 411 because I understand why they wanted to put graphics in there. I understand, but the way they've done it is very confusing because they have this graphic with lots of people and then a message in the middle. And when you pull it up, people think those are the candidates because it ends up like this big and the candidates are like this big. So I'm on a mission to get them to change it, but I don't, think I'm going to be able to do that. But if you look at that Ward 2 one, I think you'll see what I mean. I'd like to add something here. So right now we used Vote 411 last weekend, and I think Susan Garo is on this call because people are interested just to check to make sure that they're registered and if they lost their voter number. So when we were at a outreach to a Hispanic organization, she was able to show this lady exactly how it works. She typed in the address and gave her all her information, her ward, her voter registration number, you know, who's representing her now. And so it's powerful. They see that the organ that the the, actually the program works and we did just what Catherine said we said come back in five weeks and you'll see how it works for voters so there's still always that so actually there's sometimes I should have been more careful about disambiguation but vote 411 is live all the time the website itself of vote 411 and there's all kinds of voter information that you can get there 24-7, 365 days a year. But the voter guide portion of it, which is also called, because part of Vote 411, the voter guide portion is, um, and just 
is it the voter guide portion right here um so it tells you did you, are you using the slash lwvdc one i tried and then i don't know that it always comes up to anything so yeah it's yeah so if we okay you get to Okay, so here we have, here's, here are your races. This is the one that I left live, the Ward 2 Council. Now, people are going to think this is the Ward 2 Council member, but it's <laughs> not. If you scroll up, mm -hmm. you'll see that is the little tiny person as the candidate. Mm -hmm. But this is really unfortunate graphics, my personal opinion. And it's new. They did it. They just did it. This is, was not there in the primary, I don't think. So just to go through that more more clearly, right? I entered my address. Then we have kind of what are some the dates? So that October 15th date that Barbara highlighted is here. When can we in person, right? I mean, obviously DC, we have lots of ways to vote. So mail-in ballots will be going out probably even before or right as the voter guide is going live, right? It's also the race we're against. Um and then it kind of confirms again, what's your address? And then people have to select this. Now in a primary, this matters more than in the general. So then we're saving our, our settings, viewing our races. And here's where uh, Catherine's talking about, especially with only one, one right. race, right? It's very easy to miss this, but here you, you see there's a little, you could toggle that button. So just clicking anywhere on that means that we got um the information and you'll see here where there's some of the spanish information as well helping someone navigate uh, that might be hard to see but i just highlighted it blue so some of it's in spanish um and then in a in a normal race rate you would have uh multiple candidates to look at so i i clicked this box to view answers and so here we have the information Brooke submitted, and then these are the questions, right, that we as le the, our DC League, not any other league anywhere else, our DC League asked for our DC people, right? Mm -hmm. So things about what are the two most important things council should do, increasing housing, um, the commitments to reducing greenhouse gases, safe, reliable, frequent public transit, root causes of crime, right? And if there were multiple candidates, you would kind of see both of their answers simultaneously. So you'd get that chance to see that. Um, and and so this is just a, this is a real candidate, but also a sample for right now, if you just want to kind of show someone what it looks like and how to use it. Um, uh, I see Anita, you have a hand raised. Yeah, I have a hand raised, but it's not about a uh, vote for one one. So All right. uh, yeah, I, I'll I give you it, let's give it a that. second and see if anyone else has a vote for a one question. Or if not, I'll stop my screen share and we'll turn it over to Anita to ask her question. All right. I'm gonna stop my share. Anita. So yeah, so my question is just about um, the members who worked with um, college stu students on voter registration, because from the experience that we, we had at Howard, there was probably as much interest in the absentee ballot piece and, get, and making sure that they knew how to get absentee ballots, because mm -hmm. a number of them told us that they were already registered. So I guess, you know, one of the questions that it's kind of piggybacking on what Nancy said, um, you know, is there some kind of model we can use to do this, even as we're doing voter registration at the at the college level to be able to make sure that they're able to do the absentee ballot? And I think that that involves, I mean, it gets more complicated because you've got to have the printers and everything to print out their application. So I just wanted to see kind of what the league has done with respect to that in the past. And I, I apologize if this is something that you guys covered in earlier. No, meetings. no, no, I'm happy to, but Anita, could you give me your email and I'll send you the link. Okay. The information. Um, okay. So, so I'll just, you want me to just put it in the chat? 
it'll be fine. Okay, yeah. great. Okay. Yeah, um, so we, we have this model. You're right, it can be more complicated because there's printing involved, but at least it, if we get the students to know what they need, that that's the progress. Mm -hmm. it's very it's very difficult and there are like 50 over 50 different ways to do it mm -hmm. right yeah. i mean I, if you could send that to me too that would be i, I have i have that i made you a note to that. send it to you nancy and i can okay. send it to anybody who wants it okay yeah i just put i just sent it to you right. um great thank you Catherine. thank you that was a great question anita thank you um you were in baltimore recently right register um, mm -hmm registering it was the hbcu conference we we were yeah we were at the thorogood marshall conference um right. back i think it was in march but we were, were we were um uh, registering students but that's one of the reasons why i asked the question because what we found out is a lot of students were already registered but these students were from all over the country um, but primarily in some of the the um, the states that are going to be close, like Georgia and North Carolina. So tr so trying to help them figure out how to get absentee ballots is what we spent a lot of time on with them, as opposed to just strictly voter registration. Right, and we've got a short window of opportunity for them now because you know they're going to you know we're hoping the turnout is going to be really heavy. In, right. in the presidential election years, 2020 was a pandemic year. Um, so things were a lot more difficult than they are now. Um, so, you know, I think I think people, you know, pe people want to vote, um, but they've got this small window of opportunity, especially students who are going to be voting out of town. Right. All right. Hi. So I have a. Okay. Sorry. Hi. I, have I need a to raise my hand. Let me see if I can do this correctly. <laughs> uh, I will raise my one finger. Okay. I uh, hi. I was just putting a note <laughs> in the chat. I'm I'm excited on two levels. I just became a member of the league, so I'm so excited because I've been just kind of monitoring and looking at your work in DC for for many years. And the second reason I'm so excited is I am the chair of our project called Our Vote, Our Voice for the Washington section, which is part of the National Council of Negro Women. And based on what I heard tonight, I am just so excited. And I would like to look at opportunities to partner with you. Um, you're doing some of the same um, initiatives that we are looking at and thinking about. And um, if you are familiar with the makeup of the National Council of Negro Women, we have sister affiliates like the AKAs, the top ladies of distinction. So we have a lot of women who are working in their own organizations, but I would love to work together to get this done. So um, I will be reaching out to your president, but I'm just so excited to be here. We're here to help any way we can. So many, you know, we already have a presence. We have um, collegiate sections at Howard and GW. Um, so I was just listening and thinking about all of the ways that we can join forces to get this work done. So um, I will put my information in the chat and I just look forward to uh, hearing uh, how we can work with you. And yes, I do know what 411 is. I, I'm a, one of the older members. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just so excited and just look forward to working with you more. Oh, thank you so much, Linda. Denise, did you have yes, your hand? Oh. I did. So uh, I am also new uh, to the league and wondered in listening to um, the uh, goals for voter engagement, the status of the DC statehood, uh, voter registration, absentee ballot registration. Do you all have talking points or a script that us newbies can use to kind of get, um, I, I guess, footing in the conversations that uh, we're going to be having when we do these community engagement events? Yes, indeed, we do, <clears throat> Denise, we've got a lot of information. Um, there's a training we ask members who are going to do voter registration events um, 
to complete. It's very easy. Yeah, you can do it virtually. I completed that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and we do when when we go out, um, we we do have scripts, sometimes PowerPoint presentations. Um, mm -hmm. We're working on one now in the for for the uh, DC high schools. Um, you know, wanting wanting to make those presentations more interactive. Um, addressing the concerns that students that you know that, that the high school students have. Catherine, I think you're working on something for vote 411 a presentation. Yeah, as soon as I finish the one I'm working on work. Yes, and I think that's going to be helpful to all of us when I get it done. And I put out a post one thing about the league our new newest members Linda and Denise. I have to tell you that I posted on our list or like, does, has anybody done a PowerPoint? Do they have a slide deck I can use? I got three or four. So, you know, we really are a collaborative organization and people are just very anxious to share information all around. So, um, so I'm working on like a little presentation on what mostly on what is vote 411 and how do you use it? But it's not done yet because I have another one due for work on Wednesday. Denise, we also have some handouts and guides that we've put together as well. So it might be helpful as that. Yeah, um, that we can maybe email out to everyone who joined this call just so you have it in a digital yeah, format yeah, so you could review it and uh, have it on your phone. Yeah, talking points would be helpful. I mean, when I took the chat um, or the uh, one line course, I downloaded the um, PowerPoint presentation if I could have that as a resource. And so those would be helpful too. So I can really get my head around the types of things that um, people will need going forward so that they can participate in our democratic process. So that's my yeah. goal. Definitely. Yeah, and th those partnerships are really important for us. Um, you know, it truly takes a village. We work with other organizations, um, the um, you know, Black Sororities, the AKA, the Deltas. Um, so, you know, taking this on is more than one organization to mm -hmm. do, and we truly work collaboratively. So having you all with us is marvelous. Great, thanks. Thank you. Ann Stauffer. Um, yeah, so, sorry, let me lower my hand now. Thanks. So yeah, it is great. I have to uh, have to um, echo what Barbara said. It's great to have all of you here. Um, we do have a nice brochure. It's hard to tell with my blurring, but anyway, it's a brochure on voting. Um, so Jess will send that out. And Denise specifically on, and we do have a um, 10 things to know about DC statehood too, as well. So uh, we'll send that out to everyone who's joining us for the state fair. Um, my question actually is, is we have this brochure, but I realize we may need, um, you guys may already have it, but we may need a cheat sheet on the voting process this year, right? Because everyone's getting mailed a ballot, but, and then drop boxes, you know, like all the specific, DC makes it very easy to vote, but there are also lots of options. So um, do we have a cheat sheet on what the, the dates and the options? We can make one. I, I right, think because... it's in the Board of Elections calendar that I have. It is in there, but if you've ever looked through that calendar, you it's also multiple pages. It's ugly. It's, it's and it's very dense. They want to know. Um, yeah, there's a lot more information than you want than you need to like. Just mm -hmm. what are the key? There's a lot of it's all the it's all the dates are together, not just voter. It's all the candidate dates, all of the. Right. All, all the legal re they reference all the laws that have to no it's not it's not user friendly so I think we should great we need a cheat sheet for all of us because one of the things I'd like to I uh, think is part of voter education is like voting starts in DC uh, in October because they're mailing out the absentee ballots um, or the, the ballots they're not even they're mailing ballots to everybody on September 30th um, so we you know we're a month and a half away from voting season. So I, I have one, Anne. It's, we started in Spanish. We just did an English translation of it. It's short, but it's relatively effective. So maybe if people want to build on that, I'd be glad to, I can put it in the chat or just mail it out to the group. But we just used I, it for I the would first like time it. last Saturday. That, that would be yeah. great. Yeah. I also looked up 
um, thinking that private schools can have students from Virginia and Maryland. I looked up, they have the same last date for paper ballots, but of course their approach to voting is different. Any information on a cheat sheet would be wonderful. Yeah, that includes yeah. them as well. Or yeah. doesn't. Yeah. Hey, well, like I said, you can I, I wouldn't I mean, build on it. Yeah. I was gonna say right. I wouldn't I I wouldn't add Virginia and Maryland unless unless you guys who do voter services I don't know how often you run into voters from Virginia and Maryland but that's a lot of data I mean Virginia's early voting starts September twentieth and then goes from there so yeah we do um, you know we we do run across voters from Maryland and Virginia for example at the Mystics games um, and we try to have volunteers at those games from the leagues in um, Maryland and Virginia. I think we'll have, correct me, Ann Cataldo, I think we've got a, some people from Prince George's County coming and somebody from Virginia um, to, to these two Mystics games. So, you know, they, they, they know this stuff backwards and forwards. Um, but th these are great suggestions. All right, any other questions, comments? Oh, just as an FYI, I am registered for the September 7th event, so that'll be my first event. So I just wanted to get it, gather as much information that I could review and become familiar with uh, before that date. So I appreciate all of the, the emails that are coming forth. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you so much, Denise. Anything else? Okay, thanks everybody. Have a great evening. Hey, don't don't yeah. go away. Don't don't I'm still trying to get emails out of the chat. So and then I see I see Deborah's a message here. I'm sorry if your speaker's not working. Um, but I have I need to collect this before you log off. Okay. But bye everybody. <laughs> <laughs> thanks everyone. Thanks. My, speaker's, my speaker's working. What did you need, Catherine? Um Deborah I, Shetland, is that who you're talking about? Yes, oh. yes. It says, P.S., my speaker isn't working, apparently. Oh, okay. um, so it says, and I have an email here. So I just, Hi, yeah, I just, I got a message from Deborah, too, with her email, and I'll just go ahead and add her. She says she's interested in the college work, so I'm going to add her to my Okay. List of people who are interested in college work. I had said she should email me, but I because I didn't see her address, but now I see it. <laughs> anyway. okay, and I see I've got Linda Lynch, 54. Okay. All right. I think I have everybody. But if you don't hear from me, then my email is vote411 at lwvdc.org. So sometimes you have to keep after me. Like every person on this call, I'm a busy person. Thank you. <laughs> Mm. All right. Thank you. Good, Good night. night. Thanks. Good night. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.